Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. You join me here in Detroit, Michigan with the Volkswagen ID4, the most hotly anticipated new electric vehicle by this guy right here. On this video, I'm gonna show you all around it, the interior and exterior. Let's go explore. Now I'm gonna take you on a tour of the ID4. Let's explore its quirky features, some of the tech specs and why I believe it to be the best value in the electric vehicle lineup for the United States market. So uh, this is Volkswagen's first ground up EV that we've seen from them and they're doing it right. It's built on their MEB chassis that will be shared across many vehicles in the lineup. So this is not the first vehicle to be on the, the only vehicle I should say to be on this chassis. It's gonna be many more down the road. And this particular one is the ID4 first which is big battery, 82 kilowatt hour gross, 77 kilowatt hour usable, rear wheel drive, just over 200 horsepower. Now I drove the car over here, drove great. It is not melt your face fast, but it's plenty to get out of your way. Like you can have fun with it. For those who are speed freaks and like acceleration, Volkswagen's thought of you, and they will be adding a front motor for all wheel drive and an additional 100 and a bit horsepower. That's gonna be really nice. You have to bear with us in the wind here. We are in Michigan, it's cold, and we only have the car for a short period of time. So let me take you on a tour. Being the first edition, this one has uh, the light up badge, which is really cool. I really love that. And then it has a few things as well up here. No front trunk, unfortunately, in ID4. This is where they've put all of their power electronics, HVAC, uh, everything stuffed up in here so you get a larger cabin. We also have seen this on Nissan Aria. So very similar approach. Uh, this one's on the 19 inch wheels, I believe. Let's take a look here. Uh, I don't know where it says that. Uh, sometimes it's so hard to find them. They're 20s, 20 inch wheels, sorry. And uh, anyway, let me show you some of the things I've noticed. Again, we only have such a short period of time, but coming down the side of the car here, the door handles are really interesting. So these don't actually fold out of the car. There's a little squeeze sensor in the back that pulls them open. It's really, really interesting. On the inside, we'll do a whole interior tour, so save that for later. But the back seat room, I am gonna show you now. So I am six foot one. I have the driver's seat exactly where I would have it. And for the first time, I'm sitting in the back seat. Um, yeah, the first thing I'm noticing is there's a lot more bolstering in this seat on my back here than I've noticed in almost any other EV crossover. Uh, and, and ones I've sat in have been Mustang, nope, uh, what have I sat in, Model Y, uh, Nissan Aria most recently. And uh, yeah, this is definitely gonna hold you in a little bit better. There is a center divider here in the back as well with two cup holders, that's nice. Um, but no rear seat pockets? No, there is rear seat pockets. Rear seat pockets here and even a top rear seat pocket. So excuse me, there are two, they're just very well hidden. That's pretty nice. You have this cool material as well. This is all fairly hard plastic, but it doesn't feel unpremium. Everything here is pretty hard touch point, except where you put your elbow. So um, Volkswagen does a really good job of using what would be considered cheap materials, but in a premium way. So everything has a lot of weight to it. Everything feels really nice. All of the seat materials are animal free in this car. Uh, so you either get cloth seats in the standard trim or the step up, it's the select, they have in names, I can't remember them off the top of my head, you get a leather et, so not full leather. Let's take a look in the trunk here. It is a power trunk on the ID4 first edition. Unconfirmed if the, the standard car will have a power trunk, although I believe it will. Under here, take a look, uh, come on in. So you have a pretty large storage area. The seats do fold flat and you also have an underfloor storage area here and up there as well. This is the uh, level one NEMA 515 regular, you know, wall connector or wall outlet uh, charging cable. So that's uh, what's gonna come included. And Volkswagen is working on a 240 volt solution uh, mobile connector. They haven't selected one yet, but they are actively thinking about it. And, um, We'll see what they do. But for home charging, they're gonna be uh, diverting you over to Electrify America's home division where they will install a wall box in your house. Or of course you can choose any off the shelf wall charger. It's just J1772. Speaking of charging, here's the port. Uh, one of the best things about this port is you'll notice there's a little seal right here on the cover. That means you don't need to pull the cover on and off the J1772 port every time you go in. Now the CCS uh, DC pins at the bottom still have this connector. Um, but that's pretty 
you know, infrequent use for most ID4 users. You're going to be charging at home. And unlike some other EVs, namely the BMW i3, you don't have to pull that silly little cover off every single time. Uh, let's talk DC charging while we're on the topic of charging. This car has a 125 kilowatt peak charge rate. And um, that's okay. It's fine for most users. And what's more important than the peak of the charge rate is what the charge curve looks like. And based off of the other Volkswagen Addy Group EVs that we've tested here on this channel in our DC charging test, we can assume with some confirmation from Volkswagen that this charging curve will be relatively flat all the way. What that means is, Although it doesn't have the peak of a Model 3's 250 kilowatt charge rate, it is going to sustain the power longer. So the Model 3 starts to cut power at 250 kilowatts, somewhere in that 30, 40 percent uh, range. You can go back and look at our charging test. This should maintain 125 kilowatt all the way to 80 percent. So it'll be great for those road trips with long stretches between chargers because you can charge this almost all the way to 100 percent with very little uh, uh, fade down in your charging curve. I really like that. And then we can just go on to like my personal feelings and impressions about this car. On the exterior, it's a happy car. Just look at it. It's, you know, you see this car, it's still German and serious, but it's got a fun flair to it. I love all these little design cues in the headlights here. I love the fact that on not first production models, but just after first productions, the Volkswagen badge is going to be lit up. And the thing I, you know, about the Volkswagen badge lighting up is it's not a pretentious badge. It's not like your giant light up Mercedes badge on a CLA. This is actually, it's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. And then also you have your running lights that continue all the way across the car. So it's, it's a pleasant vehicle to look at at night. You can see at the bottom here, there's some air intakes in this cool uh, mesh grill style thing. And while a front trunk would be nice, it doesn't personally bug me uh, that there isn't one. And we talked about this when we reviewed the Nissan Aria a few weeks back. Most of our commenters agreed that it, while it would be nice to have, it's not necessarily necessary to have. So uh, before we jump inside, you'll notice a camera here on the windshield and there's a radar unit somewhere around here. I haven't had a chance to dig into it yet. This car as standard has every single piece of safety tech Volkswagen can offer you. We spent some time with the product planning division just before we came over here. They made a big point to say, look, we put every piece of driver assistance technology we could at no cost option. What that means is you get blind spot monitoring, forward collision braking, of course, but also adaptive cruise control and lane centering. So you get Volkswagen's travel assist. And I think that's enough on the exterior. It's a pleasant looking car. Uh, really, it, it's actually a great looking car. It's great proportions. I love the small hood. It's what you would do if you design an EV from the ground up. This is the way to do it. Let's go take a look at the interior. Now you join me on the inside of the ID4 and we're going to start with the key. This is a really premium key, uh, but it only has really four functions, alarm, lock, trunk, and unlock. And this is going to stay in your pocket most of the time. You kind of don't even need it for most things. When you get inside, there isn't even a start stop button. You just get in, put your foot on the brake and everything turns on. This car will show some warnings and things like this. It says, you know, rear traffic alert. This is a very early pre-production car. This is not representative from a technology standpoint as to what we'll see. It's actually many iterations behind where they already are, but at least they're comfortable with the usability and functionality. So the screen will look very similar to this. There's a few commands you can do gesture commands with. You can actually see it responding. I didn't touch anything there. So I think I can go here and move the screen. Yeah, they said this is what's gonna get really improved. So don't worry so much about all of that little stuff, this lagginess. They say this should be really fast when we get to production. Of course, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but getting in the ID4, you have uh, to, to go basically. Let's say you're just getting in and going. This is the best part. It's foot on the brake and put it in drive, just like what an EV should be. There doesn't need to be a keyhole and everything. Now there is a separate button down here, start, stop, which is in situations like this. If you leave, for example, and someone's sitting in the passenger seat, you're able to click this to turn on the accessory power keep the car powered up for a passenger, for example. So you have a button just for that specific use case, which is pretty nice. This car also has a heated steering wheel, heated seat. We've tested both out today in this cold Michigan day, although it's, it's up to 50 degrees now. 
and they work great, really, really nice. Um, we won't go through all the little controls, all the, the haptic stuff, you know, all of this is not push button, it's all haptic controls, for example, so we can go into climate and adjust everything as normal. We don't have any time for range testing today, but I can show you some of these. You know, you just slide your finger up and down, or of course you can just touch on either side and hit sync, which is nice. So very standard UI. What I think the, the biggest use case for this system here though is you're gonna get in the car, throw your phone on the wireless charger down here. So a huge cubby area. You can see phone here, just throw it down there on the charger doesn't necessarily need to be plugged in. I don't even know if that phone has wireless charging. Let's time its phone. And, um, and then it has wireless CarPlay or Android Auto, which is fantastic. So you just get in, once your settings are set, you just use CarPlay, you get Waze up here, and that's the way you're gonna use the car for the most part. Uh, now the shifter is very similar to BMW i3. When you get in, you can lean it forwards for drive. We actually have a little light that goes across the whole front of the dashboard there. It responds to your navigation uh, instructions. So if you need to turn right, you get a whiz of light across the front of the car that says, hey, turn right. Perfect for me because I keep the voice volume off on nav. And in drive, uh, it's basically like a kind of like a gas car. It's uh, no regen. So you get creep, which you get in both modes, drive or braking. And then braking, the brake pedal blends regen in. And then B is just all regen off power, but you still get creep to move. So I can come off the pedal here and it creeps, for example. Uh, neutral and then reverse is all the way back. You don't need to actually select it twice. You can just rotate past the point of resistance and it will select the gear you're going into. Park is a little button on the side. Something I'm very used to from the i3, it's pretty intuitive. You can just touch it right here from your fingertips, really like it. Now everything on the steering wheel is totally haptic controlled. It feels super premium. It is piano black, which I'm not a fan of, especially on steering wheels. You can see the fingerprints all over the place already. But when I can touch the audio controls here, I get a little buzz saying that yes, you've selected that button, which is really nice. I can control menus through here. A lot of this is still on early production stuff, so we're not gonna go deep into the menus. And then of course you have all your cruise control, adaptive steering, uh, sorry, adaptive cruise control and active steering all on the left side of the wheel. Uh, wipers are all over here. So uh, they, I think I put it in service mode. That's probably what I've done. And now say go back down, there we go. Uh, all, most German cars that the wipers go below the hood actually have a mode that can go straight up so you can change the wiper blades. And then you have you know high beams and we're not driving it at night so we can't test any of the lights, but it's just a nice place to be. This one has the big power seats. They all have power seats, but this one's the more ways of adjustment. It even has massaging seat on the back. So I have that selected right now and it's really nice. It's just running a lumbar up and down my back. There's no modes of massage like you would find in an e-tron or potentially a lucid, but it is a really nice thing to reduce the fatigue on a long, long trip. Uh, these cup holders up front here are removable. So you can see that I can take these out and then they'll have accessories that you can put in here, which will be nice. So those will come down the road. And air vents, like it's, everything's nice in here. The one thing that's a little odd is there's no center armrest, but then you have these ones that fold down here, which actually work better than if you had a center armrest because you can lock it in place kind of wherever you want. So I can put it right here, I can push it here, and, and your arm can be at whatever height that works well. You just pull it up, push the little button to select it, and then boom, it's locked in. It's a really good place. Everything's nice and open through here. There's an open pass through. There is a small tunnel uh, over here. I'm not quite sure exactly what that would be for, but there is under storage underneath this little uh, compartment that juts out. Everything's pretty nice. I don't know what that paper is. I guess our route that we haven't been following. And then of course the glass roof that you can find on the higher trim version, that's beautiful. I would 100% recommend getting the top spec alone just for this giant piece of glass. It makes the car feel so airy, so open, and, and I really like that. In drive, it drives a little bit like a internal combustion vehicle in the sense that there's no regen, literally none. And then to add regen, you hit the brake pedal and I get a little gauge here that increases the regen on the bar. So that's pretty cool. If I rotate this knob forwards again, it goes from D into B mode, which is how I'll be driving the ID4 as much as possible. And what this does is it now transfers the acceleration, I'm sorry, the regen 
off the accelerator pedal. So now we have regen without my foot on the brake pedal. That's pretty nice. So let's merge out on the highway. We got to build up speed here. We're wide open acceleration. We're 30, 40, 45. We're already up to speed with everyone. And so it's not slow. Uh, this isn't also melt your face fast though. This isn't, uh, you know, a P100D ID4. This is the rear wheel drive configuration. I believe it's 201 horsepower, but, but right around there is, is the number. So it's adequate. You put your foot down and yeah, it certainly accelerates, but it's not, um, not melt your face. The uh, suspension feel, we spoke about this before, really soaks up the bumps very well. And so this car is, again, tracking straight very nicely. It is comfortable and the noise level at speed is unparalleled. Uh, nothing compares to this car in terms of noise at these highway speeds. Look, we're, we're just gonna bring it up. Speed limit's 70 miles an hour, right? We'll just bring it up to 70, 75 here. And it's dead silent. Uh, really, really refined experience. This is a car you can just eat up the miles in and go and go. I think we've learned that the ID4 for the price is so premium, uh, really is. You know, the, the material touch points are all pretty hard and pretty plasticky, but Volkswagen does a good job of making those still feel nice. It doesn't feel cheap car esque. Nothing in this car, uh, and I really mean nothing, makes it feel like it's a inexpensive everyday product. It feels upmarket, but the price is very, you know, market. It's very right in the middle. Uh, the, the price is really the best part, the value. And, and some of the product planning guys were even saying they wanted to make it cheaper. And we're deploying all that acceleration. Yeah, see, you can use it. It's not slow. Uh, I wish it was faster, but I think the all-wheel drive one will solve that for me. That's my gripe. I will wait for the long-range all-wheel drive version of this car. Anyway, we're gonna keep repeating ourselves, uh, praising the Volkswagen ID4. We're gonna hear it from the Tesla owners in the comments on this one. Uh, again, I love my Tesla, I really do. Uh, but but you, this is a great car. I really hope you go and drive one. I think everyone will really tend to like it, at least I do. And while I really wish I could bring you a full in-depth tour like we're used to doing here on Inside EVs, I hope this first glance at least gets you a little bit excited about the ID4. It shows a new wave of direction for the Volkswagen brand. They are going to have so many electric vehicles coming out. I would say out of all of the German brands, Volkswagen Group in general is pushing the hardest for electrification. They almost have a theory inside the company that if it's not electric, they're not interested. And you got to give them props for that. So this is a fun, sporty, great to drive crossover that is rear wheel drive in this particular trim, which I love. I'm glad it's not a front wheel drive one. All wheel drive capable. I can't wait to get one for a long term review so we can take it through our series of tests. But I'm glad I was able to at least take you on a quick tour of the car. And thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next one. We're gonna go drive it now.